Good morning, and welcome to the United Methodist Church of Nokomis, Illinois, on this uh, twenty on the sixteenth day of May, twenty twenty one. <clears throat> Next Sunday, the 23rd, is Confirmation Sunday. We will confirm six people into the membership of the church and into the body of Christ, and we will baptize one of them beforehand as well. This week, we want to uh, congratulate Connie Oki, Joan Laurie, Dale Yeski for having birthdays, and also uh, Bill and Jean McCall, and uh, Kirk and Michelle Pavoka have uh, have anniversaries. <coughs> Today is Ascension Sunday when we celebrate Christ's return to God. We look up in wonder as if he is lifted from us into heaven. But this is not a time to gaze upward. There is work to be done. Jesus has entrusted the ministry of God's love to us. Let's get to work. Let's make our hearts ready for the task ahead with prayer and praise. Will you pray with me now, please? Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you revealed to us a power that has no parallel. May the eyes of our heart be enlightened to this power and all it has done in our lives. Pour out your spirit of power on us that we may proclaim your glory and, gra and your grace. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. We uh, want to thank you for the ways that you have continued to support this church through the pandemic, and we hope that it's very close to being over. Uh, but uh, we would like to encourage you to send your gifts if you can't be here on Sunday morning. Uh, send them to uh, United Methodist Church of Nokomis, Post Office Box 156, Nokomis, Illinois, 62075. Generous God, with joy and confidence in your abiding love you uh, and presence with us, we offer our gifts, tokens of our lives as an offering for service in and to this world which you have entrusted us. Bless the gifts and bless those who place their trust in you. And let us continue to pray. Dear Lord, we are so fortunate to be gathered here this morning to hear the good news of the promised spirit of truth. We celebrate that we are a community of people, each at a different point in his or her faith journey, each seeking your healing love and mercy. We are called to witness to the good news of Jesus who taught us about God's love for each one of us and for God's magnificent creation. But there are those for whom this world seems a distant hope or experience. They struggle with difficulties of living every day, with addictions, with illness, with alienation. Help us to bring the good news to them in gentle kindness and compassionate understanding. Let our actions and our attitudes reflect all that Jesus taught us. For just a moment, we take a deep breath and remember those we love who are in difficulty in our hearts and our minds now. <clears throat> you have heard the cries of our hearts. Oh Lord, we ask for your healing mercies on all whom we have mentioned by voice and by prayer. We also ask for your healing in our own lives. Keep our hearts open to your love. Help us to be witnesses of mercy and hope wherever you place us. 
We ask this in Jesus' name, who did teach us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There are two stories of the ascension in uh, one in Luke and, and one in uh, Acts. We'll look at the Acts version this morning. <clears throat> Starting in chapter 1, verse 1. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning, right up to the day he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father, for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but in only a few days, you will be baptized in the Holy, with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, we are going to, when are you, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, it isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood next to him. They said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking toward heaven? This is Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. These are words from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Today is one of those, oh, God is good and all the time. Pray with me, please. <clears throat> God, be in our hearts and in our minds and in my mouth as I give your word for this day. Amen. Today is one of those relative, relatively obscure Christian holidays of which many are unaware. Ascension Sunday. Actually, Ascension Day was on the 13th. Uh, this is the Sunday that we celebrate the day of ascension. <clears throat> this is the day in the church calendar when we celebrate the ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven. In all honesty, the ascension is a rather difficult idea for the modern mind to, um, to handle. It's the story of how Jesus went to the Mount of Olives after his resurrection from the dead. There, According to what we heard in the book of Acts, Jesus literally flew off up into heaven. Remember in chapter 9, it said, or in verse 9, it said, He was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Now, in the first century, the understanding of the cosmos was very different from ours. People understood heaven 
to be a place that was literally and geographically up from the earth. The earth was the main level and, and below that was Sheol. And then uh, up over the dome that was the earth was, was heaven. And this, um, this was believed up until the 1940s when they started launching space, uh, they started uh, launching rockets into space and people uh, said, well, you, you will disrupt the, the fabric of heaven if you do that. <clears throat> but in the first century, they could vi visualize Jesus leaving them and going up into heaven. With our scientific view of the cosmos, we know there is no up or down in the universe. Even our notion of heaven is not of a geographical location or direction. When contemporary people think of the ascension, it's a little hard to imagine the Lord Jesus Christ flying off like a one-person space shuttle into the skies. <clears throat> Yet, despite our scientific reservations, the story of the ascension is spiritually important to us. The ascension was the church's way of dealing with the fundamental fact. The earliest disciples had experienced the bodily presence of the risen Lord, the one who was no longer under the claim of death. After a passage of time, this experience of the risen Lord as bodily present with them seemed to pass. He didn't appear again. They accounted for this, by saying that the risen Lord was now sitting at the right hand of God in heaven. They had to go forward without his physical presence. He had ascended into heaven. Christians today have the same circumstance. We believe in a risen Lord who is no longer physically present. The body of Jesus is not here any longer except in the church as the body of Christ. So on Ascension Sunday, we do well to think about what Jesus' physical absence means for Christians today. And first of all, the absence of the physical Jesus calls us to take seriously the church as the body of Christ. This is a concept with which we are all very familiar. We say that the church is the body of Christ without thinking about what it might actually mean. If the church is the body of Christ, then we are called to give the church the devotion and respect that Christ deserves. Think about it. Think about it. How precious to you is the church? How central to your life is the mission of the church? It is easy for us to think that we would respond to the physical presence of genius with, uh, of Jesus with all the love and devotion we could humanly summon. Yet, we often treat the church as just one more volunteer community organization. Now, now civic clubs do good work. Health-related charities appeal to us Organizations that support our schools do important work, and these are all, all necessary. But none of these organizations are the body of Christ. Only the church is Jesus among us. Its mission is to be consistent with Jesus' mission. The love we have for it is the love we have for Jesus. The church is the closest we will ever come on earth to having Jesus to care for and to love. On Ascension Sunday, we are called to reassess our devotion to the church as the physical body of Christ still among us. The risen Lord is not here. He has ascended. The body of Christ is very much here, and the way we treat the church is the way we treat the risen Lord. Second, Ascension Sunday reminds us that we are each individually a part of Christ's body 
To honor the church as we honor Christ is also to remember that in a powerful way, we are each part of the body of Christ. When we neglect our part in the mission of the church, <clears throat> we disable the body of Christ. As Paul said in uh, chapter 12 of his first letter to the Corinthians, each of us is a physical part of the body of Christ. We are the arms and legs, the eyes and the ears. We are the limbs and organs of Christ's present body. When we fail to do our part, the body becomes disabled. Christ becomes disabled without the limb or organ that each of us is called and gifted to be. I invite you to read the 12th chapter of Corinthians um, later today and, and, uh, and, and become acquainted with that. The absence of the physical body of Jesus places a claim on us to relate to the church as we would relate to Christ. It also reminds us that without our individual faithfulness to the role in the church, the body of Christ is weakened and perhaps even disabled. Thirdly and last, Ascension Sunday reminds us that if Christ's work is to continue, it is up to us to do it. Now, that is not to say we receive no godly help. Next Sunday, we'll celebrate Pentecost and we will celebrate our empowerment by the Holy Spirit. But this divine help comes to empower us in doing the work of Christ. Jesus is no longer here to heal the sick. He is no longer here to touch the outcast. He is no longer here to feed the hungry. It is up to us, the body of Christ, to continue this work. If the church fails to be the body of Christ, Jesus is absent. If the church fails to be the body of Christ, Jesus is nowhere to be seen. Yes, this is an obscure Christian holiday. It celebrates an event that is difficult for the modern scientific mind to take literally. At the same time, it is a critical day in our personal and collective self-understanding. It is significant that the risen Lord ascended into heaven. His ascension invites us to relate to the church as we would to Christ. It reminds each of us the critical of the critical nature of our role in the body of Christ. It calls us to take up Jesus' work on earth. This is a most important obscure day. Amen. So now, go forth in hope. Go forth with the knowledge of Christ's presence, God's presence with you. Go and serve God by taking care of each other and God's world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go now in peace. Amen.